Hello, Glenn here from Digital Photography Courses. Welcome. In this session, I'm going to be looking at using longer telephoto lenses with the Move Shoot Move Rotator. Now, recently on the MSM website, they've upgraded their policy on the maximum size of lenses. Previously, they've always said, and it still applies, that uh, the MSN is actually recommended for wide angle lenses and short telephotos. So maybe uh, 100 to 135 millimeter. I know a lot of people use the Rokinon 135. Um, so what I've actually got here is I've actually got the uh, Tamron 16 to 300 millimeter lens. And this is something I use quite regularly for just sort of deep sky objects and that type of thing. So if we just take a look at the setup, what we have is the, um, the MSN Allen Wallace uh, Z platform. You could just as easily use the V platform, that wouldn't be a problem. The MSN, we've got a Manfrotto ball head. And on the top here, we have got a focusing rail, a macro focusing rail. So if I just spin this whole thing round for you, just so you can see it from the other side, I'm just locked it off a second. What you'll notice is with these rails, we can. This is the lock. The small one's the lock. We can undo the lock, and we can move this forward and back, so we can change the centre of gravity. Okay, so we can move it quite well back if need be, and then we can lock it off. Now, the other thing we've got here is this piece of white foam. Now, this is really quite useful. What it actually does is it takes out any flex between the tripod base and the rail and sort of gives it a bit of extra support. But also what it does is this is the focusing ring. And so, and this is the zoom ring. Now, one of the problems that zoom lenses can have is, particularly if they get a bit worn, is they can have what's called lens creep. And so lens creep is basically where the lens shrinks as you point it up or it expands out as you um, sort of point it down. You often find if you carry the lenses, the lens gets longer. And a lot of lenses, this one included, has actually got a lens lock that locks it in the closed position. But of course it does not lock it in the fully open position. So this little bit of extra pressure on here is really useful just for stopping that lens creep. The last the last thing you want when you're doing your sort of deep sky objects is to come back after half an hour or an hour and find that you were at 300 and now you're at 200. So not a good plan. So while we're here, the other important thing is of course is we need to switch this lens to manual focus and we need to switch off the image stabilization. And I have to tell you, Many people I know forget to switch off the image stabilization, and then what will happen is you'll actually get uh, your stars won't be pinpoints, they'll actually get sort of movement caused by the anti shape mechanism in your lens. So please remember to switch that off. So let's have a look at how I would use this setup. So let me just spin it around because my orientation is I have north in this direction and generally speaking my targets are in this direction. So the first thing I would do is get everything level. So if we just close down the platform for a second, there we go, and just here um, you can see, you want to make sure you can see the bubble level. Now I have actually done several videos on how to mount the MSN to different uh, um, sort of uh, tops. So you, we've done a ball head, we've done the Z bracket, uh, or Z platform, we've also done a three-way head and also the wedge. So if you'd like to have a look at those, I'll post links to those down in the description. So the first thing we do then, we've got the laser on board here. What I suggest you do is make sure that your bubble level is, um, is centered and mine is, I've done that. Uh, now because we've taken the, the, the sort of this, the platform is directly on the legs, then what you'll probably need to do is alter the length of your tripod legs. So next thing we need to do is we need to get the direction. So what I'm going to do is just uh, tilt this up very slightly and lock it off. The purpose of doing that is it just gives me access to this uh, rotational screw and then looking over the top. Now what you can do here is if you just tilt your camera forward you can actually look across the top of the lens and the tripod um, or the hot shoe and just use that to kind of get yourself lined up in the right direction. And we can lock that off, not super tight at this stage. And the next thing we need to do, of course, is we'd have the laser switched on 
and we now need to uh, do our elevation. So with the laser on, we do our elevation. In my case, it's around about there. Lock that into position. Now at this point, obviously you do a quick final check on everything. At this point, just go round and just double check everything is locked. You don't want this rig moving once you get going. So everything locked off, pointing at the North or South Celestial Pole. And so the next thing we need to do is go and find our target. So in my case, that's often as I say, Orion or something like that. So we look through. Yeah, go and find our target and get everything locked off. And then of course you would work out uh, your exposures, etc. If you felt this wasn't quite sort of balanced and you felt it was a bit heavy, maybe towards the back, we can just undo the locking screw and we can move this forward and get what we think is a better balance. So that looks pretty central to me. Okay, so using this setup, 300 millimeter lens, uh, this is actually a Nikon D7200. With this setup, I can usually easily get 15 to 20 second exposures. Um, with this lens, it's not brilliant as its widest aperture, so I tend to stop it down to around about f8, and, um, and that leaves me using ISOs of around about sort of 800 ISO, maybe 1600. If I'm shooting Orion, I'm always careful not to burn out the core because it's very easy to do. So uh, yeah, so using this setup, I can get sort of 15, 20 second exposures. I have actually done exposures at 30 seconds without too much trouble, but you will probably end up throwing a few more of those away because the SARS might not be totally pinpoint. Um, but I think that's pretty good because if we work on the 500 rule without any tracking, the 500 rule would suggest uh, this is a 300 millimeter lens. Um, on a DX camera, on a full frame camera, I use, would use the 500 rule. Uh, on a, this type of camera, on a DX camera, I tend to use the 300 rule. So if we go 300 into 300, that is one second. So you can see without tracking, the best you would get is probably one second. So if we're getting 15, 20 seconds, that is pretty good. That's 15, 20 times more than you would get without tracking. So good little system, works really well. And this is my sort of certainly go-to uh, travel setup and it all slips nicely in the bag. So thank you for your time. I hope you found that useful and I'll see you again soon.